heads now just a moment for prayer our gracious and heavenly father we are uh, approaching thee again tonight now in the name of the Lord Jesus to give thee thanks for another day and we are asking now for your blessings on the service tonight let the Holy Spirit come and Give us the interpretation of these things that we're so diligently seeking. Oh, God, may it be so precious that we can all fellowship around the Word in such a way that when we leave, we'll be able to say, did not our hearts burn within us as He talked to us along the way? We thank You for what He has been to us and trusting that He will remain with us as we journey on. For well, we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So happy to be back in the house of the Lord tonight in the service again. And we are uh, glad. I'm so happy that just uh, thought this one wouldn't come, but it finally did. And so I'm so thankful that being the last of those four horse riders, which I think is one of the main messages to the church at this time. I don't know what the other one is. I'm just taking it day by day. Just as he reveals it, I'm trying to, to give it by as he gives it to me. Are you enjoying the, the message? Amen. Have you noticed how it is a, a collaboration with them, uh, church ages, is how it just exactly fits in just perfectly with them? That's how, it, to me, it shows that it's, it's the same Holy Spirit that gives the church ages, same Holy Spirit, and giving this, you see, because it's blended together. All one big act of God showing Himself in different ways. Amen. You notice when He showed himself to Daniel in the visions that would be a representation of one thing like a, a goat in this place or maybe a tree and the next place it would be a statue and, and, and things he did making the same thing all the time just be sure that we don't miss it now I was certainly a, <clears throat> a thrill just a few moments ago talking to a little lady sitting here uh, about 85 years old and she, uh, not long just before I left to go out west, why, there was a, a little girl up in uh, Ohio that was, I think so, that was uh, dying with the last stage of leukemia. Now, leukemia is cancer in the bloodstream. And all the little thing was, you know, such an awful condition that there was no more hope for it all. They were feeding her by the vein uh, 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 operation. And um, so there was um, a real poor family. And they, uh, Mrs. Kidd here and, and Brother Kidd, they um, uh, told them about the Lord answering prayer so much. And they got together, I think, and hired someone and brought the little girl down. And she was a very pretty little girl, about or six, seven years nine old, years. nine years, and uh, and she was uh, back there in the room, and uh, and when we went before the Lord, the Holy Spirit gave a word to her, <clears throat> and they had to take her and have to take her and feed her, you know, that way, and when she left, she was crying for a hamburger, <laughs> and um, so taking her food by mouth, and they gave her the hamburger, and just went ahead feeding her natural. In a short time, a few days, they take her back to the doctor. And um, they, the doctor just simply couldn't understand. He said, like, well, he wasn't the same girl. He said, well, there, there's not even one trace of leukemia about it. Nowhere. Nowhere at all. So, uh, and uh, she was dying. They'd done give her up. Just feed her through her veins. She'd done turn yellow, you know, how 
They get and so they and now she's a school playing with the other children just as happy as can be. Reminds me of another case of that one day I just come home. There was a if I'm not mistaken, they were either Episcopalians or Presbyterian people that had brought a little girl from Kansas. And um, the doctors to give her up with the leukemia, and they gave her, I believe, four days to live. She had gotten so bad, so they said they'd just spend those four days coming over here through the snow drifts and things across the country to have her prayed for. And the grandfather, a very fine-looking uh, elderly man, gray-haired, and uh, that had her already two days down here in a little motel. I guess it isn't standing there now this side of Silver Creek. And um, so I went down that night to pray for, or it was early in the morning. I come in that night from out of town, went out, and the elderly father, grandfather was walking in the floor, and the mother trying to take care of the child. And while I knelt to pray, the Holy Spirit revealed to me a secret that was between the, the mother and the father, something they'd done. I called them to the side and asked them about it. They started crying. I said, that's right. Then I looked back, and I seen the little girl skipping a rope, going plain. And now the little child, in about three weeks' time, they sent me the picture of the little girl back in school skipping a rope and had no leukemia at all. Now, now those testimonies are absolutely bona fide truth, you see. So, our God is so real. If we uh, just uh, serve Him and, and believe Him, and, and I, I know He's real. Now, I'm uh, uh, trying my best now and and while something in, a, in among us is working its way through, and um, now we're going to try tonight, by the grace of God, to take this fourth seal and um, see what the Holy Spirit will have to say to us in it. Now, I'm going to read the uh, Revelations, the sixth chapter, and beginning with the seventh verse. <coughs> Seventh and eighth is always two verses. The first is the announcement, and the second verse is what he saw. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth, fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that set on him, that set, <coughs> was, was death and hell followed him. And power was given unto them over the four parts of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with beasts of the earth. Now, Lord, help us now to understand this. It's a mystery. Now, just a little preview to back up as we did in the church ages, these riders and these breaking of these seals. Now, so we just get it in our mind, talk a little until we feel that it's appropriate time to speak. Now, we have noticed now that the breaking of the seals, it's the seal book of redemption. And then the book is rolled up like a scroll, like the old way was. It wasn't a book of this type, because this has just recently come in, these kind of books and lace. Oh, I guess 150 years or something, 200. And then they'd roll it up and then leave the end loose. As I told you how it was done in the Scriptures, where to find it, and, and Jeremiah and so forth. Then the next was rolled around there and the end left loose. And it, like that, each one was a seal. And it was a seven sealed book. And it was um, no one, one day was, as the seven sealed book of redemption, pardon me, and then no one in heaven or in earth or beneath the earth was worthy to open it or even to look upon it. And John wept because he could find no man because if that book was not taken out of the hand of the original owner where he had been lost by Adam and Eve and went back after they forfeited their rights, 
of the Word, the promises, their inheritance. They remember they control the earth. He was a he was an amateur God, for he was a son of God, and a son of God is a uh, an amateur God. Now that ain't contrary to the scripture. I know that sounds strange. But Jesus said, if you call them who the Word of God came to, and what does the Word of God come to? The prophet. If you call them who the Word of God come to, uh, God's, how can you condemn me when I say I'm the Son of God? See? And uh, now they were God's. And man, if you become born in the family of your family name, you are a son and part of your father. And then... Then when sin came in, we found out the man crossed the chasm and brought up bulls and goats covered but did not remit until the real bleach came that could take the stain of sin and break it completely to pieces and send it back upon its original uh, perverter. That was Satan. And when it got back to Satan, he waits his time of eternal annihilation. Now, uh, that shows what we believe. <laughs> we believe that he will absolutely be done completely away and annihilated. Yeah. I believe that sin will be broke up. And when it's confessed upon the basis of the blood of Jesus Christ, it's like <laughs> dropping a drop of black ink in a bunch of Clorox bleach. It just breaks it into the chemicals and sends it plumb back to where it come from. See? And that's the way the blood of Jesus Christ does. Then that sets a man across the chasm again as a son of God. See? And then, he's, then he becomes, uh, uh, while well, even he's a creative power of God that's in him, and at least that whenever God can command it to be done, it'll be done. And we get back that when the, the Moses, under the blood of bulls, and when he met that light, the pillar of fire in that burning bush and he stood down there on a commission God had given him and he was a prophet and when the word of the Lord came to him he spoke and even things created by the word yeah. and I feel to do that under that the blood of bulls what about the blood of Jesus Amen. not covered but remitted all together you stand in the presence of God as a redeemed son Amen. now See, the church is far beyond its standard of living. And I think too many times we're proging instead of really coming out and facing the issue. I got something I want to say. And I, I will at the time. And I notice that there's something wrong somewhere in the churches. And I think it's the denominational systems that's twisted the people's minds and so forth until they don't know how to do it. That's right. But we're promised that it would be revealed. Amen. And now the seven seals that this book is sealed with. And those seven seals. Now and then after these seven seals are completed. We find in Revelations 10 there was seven mysterious thunders. That John was commissioned to write. But then forbidden to write those. Amen. And at the time of those thunders. We find Christ. Or the angel come down with a rainbow and put his feet on the land and sea and swore that time had run out at that time. And then we find out that in the revealing of the seals that uh, the Lamb had left his mentorial work as an intercessor and had come forth now to claim his rights. Amen. All that... He had redeemed by his death. And then the, no one could open the book. No one understood it. It was a book of redemption. And God, the Father, Spirit, had it in his hand because Christ was at the throne as a mediator, the only mediator. Therefore, there could be no saint, no Mary, no Joseph, no nothing else on that altar because it was blood. And only the blood of Jesus could make the atonement so nothing else could be standing as a mediator. Amen. That's right. There was nothing else. So all this idea of 
interceding with Jude for politics and interceding with St. Cecilia for something else, that's nonsense. That's not, I don't say that people are not honest and sincere. I don't say you're not sincere and you do it if you do. But you're wrong. You're, you're sincerely wrong. And anything you say, well, this, uh, uh, this angel this, this appeared to, uh, to St. Boniface and said this, that, and the other, and they should say this, uh, I don't doubt that a bit in my mind what somebody's seen the vision. I'm, I don't doubt what Joseph Smith saw the vision, but it wasn't according to the rest of the Word. So therefore, to me, it's wrong. Yeah. It has to come with the rest of the Word. That's the way the church ages and seals and all the rest of it. And when anybody thinks that he has those seven thunders, if it don't compare with the rest of the Word, there's something wrong. Yeah. It's got to come, thus saith the Lord. For this is the book. Amen. This is a revelation of Jesus Christ in its entirety. Now, uh, I believe then that the Lamb came forth. They didn't know. John was weeping. He couldn't find nobody in heaven and earth because all is on the other side of the chasm. See? Sin. There's no man and an angel. Of course, he'd be worthy. But after all, it had to be a kinsman. It had to be a human being. And there was no such a thing. Because every man had been born by sex. I'd take him one born without it. <laughs> so God Himself took that in the virgin birth and become Emmanuel. His blood was for the one that was worthy. And when He crossed this chasm Himself and paid the price and bridged the way for the rest of us, then He sat down to be mediator. Amen. And He's been sitting there and the book has actually been closed all that time. It's there, but it's still in symbol. They've seen it. John even saw it. The announcement when the first come forth, he said a white a horse went forth. He had a rider on him. He had a bow in his hand. That's symbol. That isn't revealed. No, it's just a symbol. And as far as any man upon the earth, that's all he could say. Right. He might stumble and stagger, no doubt hit somewhere here or there and after a while. But we find out then that in the book of the Revelation, at the seventh angel's message, the mysteries, all the mysteries of it should already be revealed. Amen. By that time, that's Revelation uh, 10, 1 to 7, that it should be revealed according to that time. At that time when he did, then the seven thunders uttered their strange voices, and John was going to write. John knew what it was, but he, he didn't write it because he's forbidden to write it. That's absolutely an altogether mystery. It's not even in symbol or nothing. We just know he, he thundered, that's all. Amen. And now in studying this, now don't forget, now Sunday, or Sunday morning, we omitted the healing service because of having the answers. To the, uh, to the people's question. Now, I want you to have a question on these seven seals. If it's bothering you, something you don't understand, let's have it on the seven seals. Then I can tell by Saturday night where it's enough to, to answer them or not, you see. And then um, just, now just say, well, about something else, or should I do this, or, or my, I had a dream. Them, them's all worthy things. Now, remember, they're worthy things. But let's stay right with the seven seals. That's what we're right on. Let's... That's what the, the meeting is designated to, the seven seals. Let's stay right with that. I got to go home, got to have a few meetings out in the West. I'll be back again then in a little over a month or two or something like that. And maybe the Lord will permit that we can uh, have uh, something else on that, maybe healing service or something that, or whatever we're whatever it is. And we got seven trumpets here to come forth yet, you see. Amen. And that all comes in there too, and the seven vials, see, to be poured out. So, and it all blend right in here, but it's all mysterious yet. Now, last night, we find that the first seal went forth, and the rider, and the Lord, so help me, I never knew it before. None of these things have I ever known before. That's right. And I just don't just go up there and take the Bible and sit down and sit there <laughs> until when it goes to breaking forth like that, I just pick up my pen and start writing. And just stay there maybe for hours until it gets, uh, it gets finished. Then I go back and I find out as I see where he said this. Oh, well, it looks like I've seen that somewhere. I get my concord. Just go look back. Is there something like that? And here it is right here. 
And then here it is over here again. Here it is back here and down here and over here. Then I just tie it right in. I know that's God as long as just comparing Scripture with Scripture. That's what it has to do. It's like putting a building together. The stones has to fit stone by stone. Now, last night, we had the opening of the, um, of the third seal. First was a white horse, and the next was a red horse, and then a black horse. And we find out that the riders were the same rider all the time. And that was the Antichrist to start with. He didn't have no, no crown, but he received one later on. And then we find out that then he was given a sword to take peace from the earth. And we find out that he did that. And then he come in with the dogmas of getting the church with money by weighing a penny of, for this and two pities for that. But he's forbidden to touch the oil and the wine, which was a little. It, it was left. And then we give, left off last night with the illustration of what the oil and wine was and what the effects that it had. And we, it might sound a little rude, but uh, it's just exactly the truth. Amen. How we left off on uh, it was just a few moments review of that now. And then... Um, we left off on the power of um, the wine, what the oil represented spirit. Now, I guess you all got it all down. You'll find it on the tape if you didn't. And um, where to find the scriptures that the oil always symbolizes the Holy Spirit, like the foolish virgins with no oil, wise virgins with oil, which is the Holy Spirit, and then on back in, in the, the prophets and so forth. And now... Uh, of course, I don't try to pull out every scripture in there and these things that you can't even speak about take too much time. But I try to place out here with scriptures and so forth just enough to give the people so it'll let them know and see the picture of it. But if you sit down with one of them seals, why well, my, you could take a month's sermons every night right on that seal and still not even touch it see, on one of them. And that's how, how much there is to it. But just hit the high spots of it and then you can... You can see what it's all about. Now, as oil symbolized the Holy Spirit, then we find out that oil and wine is connected in worship. And always connected in worship. And uh, wine, I uh, said, which come to me, that the wine symbolizes that it was a power of, uh, it was a power of stimulation by revelation. Thing. And uh, that's when uh, something has been revealed, it gives stimulation Amen. to the believer Hallelujah. because it's presented by revelation. See? It's something that God has said. It's a mystery. You can't understand it. See, And after a while, God comes down and reveals it and then vindicates it. Remember, if the truth is revealed, the truth is also vindicated. God constantly, no matter how smart the person might be, how brilliant he might be in his mind, if God don't back up what he's saying, there's something wrong. Right. Because it's the Word. Now when Moses went out there under the inspiration of God and said, Let flies come. Flies come. Yeah. Said, Let frogs come. Frogs come. Yeah. See, what if he said, Let flies come, they didn't come. <laughs> they, then he, he didn't speak the Word of the Lord. See? Yeah. He only spoke, uh, he spoke his own Word. He might have thought they ought to be flies, but it, they, they didn't need flies come because God hadn't told him so. Yeah. And when God tells you anything, it says, you go do this, and I'll be right with it, for this is my word. And he shows it in the Bible, and God stands right behind that. Amen. And if it's not written in the Bible, God stands behind it anyhow if it's God's word. Amen. Okay? Amen. And then if it's outside of that, it's revealed to prophets. We realize that all the mysteries of God is made known to prophets, and them alone. Amen. Okay? Amos 3, 7. Now, now the power of uh, revelation brings stimulation to the believer. For the power of wine, natural wine, is to stimulate. See? It's to, to bring a person that's all slumped down to a stimulation. See? See? Well then, uh, now, 
there is the power of the revelation of the word gives stimulation of joy to the believer stimulation of satisfaction the stimulation that it's vindicated it's proved it's called in the scripture as we want to refer to it as new wine we always refer to it like that as these are drunk on new wine see all right or spiritual wine i think the best interpretation would be it be on spiritual wine as the natural wine reveals itself in stimulated power, so does the new wine as it reveals the Word of God, which is Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now there's a, that's a, see, the Word itself is Spirit. Amen. You believe that? Yeah. Let's just read it. Let's read it. St. John 6. Let's just, then you, then you don't say, well, I, somebody said that. Let's, let's see who said it. And then we'll know whether it's truth or not. St. John, the sixth chapter. And um, the sixth chapter, and I believe it's the 60, 63rd verse. All right. I think this is. Yes. It is the Spirit that quickens it. the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Yeah. <coughs> the Word itself is spirit. It's spirit in word form. And then, you see, when it is quickened or brought to life, the spirit of the Word goes to work in acts. Amen. See? Because, that, now look here, a thought has to be a thought before it can be a word. And then when a thought is presented, it is a word. Now, this is the God's a thought that He has placed in the Word. And then when we receive it from Him, it becomes a word. God revealed to Moses what to do. Moses spoke it, and it happened. See? That's it. When it really comes from God. Now we find out that, uh, that it, it stimulates and it uh, gives joy because it is God's Word and the new wine. The new wine stimulates uh, the, uh, uh, when it uh, reveals the Word. Then brings joy beyond measure sometimes. We went through that. That it brings such joy till you get uh, all over flooded. Now, I know there's a lot of fanaticism and people carrying on. I know sometimes they do it when the music's jumping up and down and everything. And I know that goes, and uh, I believe that too. But I've seen people in the day, when the, as long as the music is playing, everybody would jump and scream it. But when the music stopped, it stopped. <laughs> I believe, well, that, that's still all right as far as I'm concerned. You see, as long as people live right. And, but now what? You start bringing the Word. Now, that's the thing that actually brings life, Amen. is the Word. And that brings the joy of stimulation of yeah. new wine. That's, and that's what it was on Pentecost when the Word was vindicated. Now, look. Now, Jesus told them, Luke 24, 49, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But you go up to Jerusalem and wait until... What was the promise of the Father? Joel 2, 28, well, we find out he's going to pour out the Spirit. Now, Isaiah 28, 19, how there be stammering lips and other tongues, and all these things. They went up there, and as we went through it, maybe one said, well, I believe we waited long enough. Let's just accept it by faith. That's good Baptist doctrine, but it didn't work with them, brothers. Yeah. So then, the first thing you know, it had to become a reality. Yeah. And they waited on their ministry for the Word to be vindicated. And when you come to seek the Holy Spirit, you do the same. Amen. Yes, you can't accept it by faith. You have to accept Christ by faith. That's exactly right. And you accept the Holy Spirit by faith. But then let the Holy Spirit come and give the circumcision Amen. as a witness that He's accepted your faith. You see, and see Abraham believed God. It was imputed to him for righteousness. But God gave him the sign of circumcision as a confirmation he had accepted his faith. 
So that's the same thing we must do. We must wait on the Holy Spirit till it's done something. Not necessarily because we spoke in tongues, not because we danced or we got emotional, we shouted, until we were changed. Until something actually happened. I don't care what form it comes in. Just so it happened. That's the main thing. Now, I believe it's speaking in tongues and all these other things are all right, but it's, that in itself won't work. And you know it won't work. So it doesn't do it. I've seen witches speak in tongues. I've seen wizards speak in tongues and dance in the Spirit. <laughs> sure. Lay a pencil down and write in unknown tongues and somebody interpret it. <laughs> That's right. And tell the truth. That's right. Look, this is exactly what happened. And it was. just exactly that way. See them throw dust on their head and cut themselves in knives and cover it all over with the blood of a wildebeest or something. And, and, and sure, see, and call on the devil. Yeah. So you see, that don't, speaking in tongues doesn't do it. Though I speak with tongue of men and angels and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Amen. See, though I could do it, see. So those things doesn't mean that you have the Holy Spirit. But when He, the person, the, the immortal Spirit of Christ becomes your personal Savior and changes you and throws your views right straight into Calvary into this Word, Amen. something's happened. Amen. Yes, sir. Something has happened. No one will have to tell you about it. You'll know it when it happens. And the new wine, when it brings revelation, then it, it's revealed, and that's the way it was at Pentecost. They know that uh, there's supposed to be a Spirit poured out upon them. And they waited till this happened. And when the vindication of the revelation took place, then stimulation was on them. <laughs> they sure did. They steamed up too. They were right out into the streets where they was afraid and had the doors shut. And they were out in the streets where they'd have been afraid of a group of people of preaching the gospel to them. That's right. See, something had happened because the true word of promise was vindicated. Now let's stop here. <laughs> If that brought such positive to them, man, that they, they, nearly every one of them sealed their testimony with their blood. No matter what come on, as long as they lived, they never got over it. It stayed there because it was the true word of promise vindicated. The revelation become a vindicated. And they died sealing their testimony with their own blood. Now look at the promise of the last days. And here we sit vindicated right before us, the, the present coming of the Holy Spirit and the works that He was supposed to do and we find it right among us. Amen. Oh, we should... Oh, my! How can we hear if something takes place? I'll tell you, friend. Amen. When the real, true, sincere, predestinated believer, when that light strikes upon that seed, yeah. something bursts Amen. forth to a new life. Amen. That little woman at the well, when those scholar priests had said, well, that's the devil. He's a fortune teller. He's, he's just telling those people his fortune. And he's, he's a devil. But when that little woman with that predestinated seed... Now, you think that's not right, but Jesus said, No one can come except my Father draws me. And all the Father has given me will come. And, he, and the Antichrist, the last days, is going to be able, that Antichrist spirit that we're studying in denominationalism, and proven that denominationalism is Antichrist. Amen. Now, beyond that, any man can walk with you like that, he... It is something wrong. Yes. You still believe that the denominational system is the Antichrist. Well, it's absolutely proof from history, from everything there is, plumb through God's Bible and everything else, it's Antichrist. Amen. And Rome is ahead of it. Amen. And the daughter of churches follow right along, and both of them are cast into hell. Amen. Right? So we see this thing, Antichrist, the spirit of it, and the day that we're living in, and why it should bring joy unspeakable and full of glory. That little old woman, as soon as that struck her, my, the seed burst forth. Now, remember the Bible says that in the last day that this Antichrist would deceive the whole world. There would only be a small number whose names were put on the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. And when that true 
vindication of the revealed truth of God's Word strikes that heart, you'll strike the water it out there with the Holy Ghost. And this is what you can, and you can't stop him from doing it. Because a new life worked for him. I was talking to a person not long ago who was trying to discuss with me and saying, aren't you ashamed to say that God created the heavens earth in three days, I, or in six days? That's not what the Bible said. He said, well, we got evidence and can prove that the world is millions of years old. I said, I didn't have anything to do with it. In Genesis 1, 1, it said, in the beginning, God created heavens and earth, period. Amen. So, Amen. Now the world was out for him and void. And I said, I believe every seed was laying right there from some other civilization or something. And as soon as the water lifted off and the light struck it, up come the trees and everything. And the same thing with a human being is a type. When all the, the, the mist is moved away and the revealed truth to that real seed laying there still germatized, and the light of the gospel can strike it by true vindication of the word, it will live. It's got life in it. Outside of that, it can't live. It has got no life in it. And them names were put on the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world will come forth just as certain as anything. And that's why Jesus sits right there and waits when his meditorial work until that last seed. And you don't know exactly when it strikes. It's Dr. Lee Bale, I guess he's still in the meeting somewhere. I haven't seen him for days. I don't believe I've seen him. He's here. He is here. Well, the other day he sent me this about what Irenaeus said. Well, I picked Irenaeus a long ways to be the angel of the age that he was, that he said when that last member of the body has come in in this last age, should be the thing would be revealed at that time. And here it is. It's exactly right. We're in the day. All right. Then uh, Pentecostal had beyond joy. They was really stimulated. I think it does anyone. Let's just take just a moment. Let's think about David. He, he got all stimulated too. He said, my cup's running over. <laughs> I mean, he really had a, a great uh, event in his life. When, what caused him to do that? When he was in the Spirit, for he was a prophet. We know he was. The Bible said so. Prophet David. Now, for he was a prophet and he was in the Spirit, and he seen the resurrection. If you'd like to read it, it's in Psalm 16, 8 to 11. He said, Moreover, my flesh was made glad. My, I, I rest in hope, because you will not leave my soul in hell, neither will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. And I'll tell you, his cup got to run it over, because he seen, no matter what it was, oh, he seen the resurrection and he was really, and his cup run over again. David had another cup running over in Second Samuel. Bitch, you got your pencils out. Second Samuel six fourteen. There'd been a dry spell. They took the ark. The enemy had come in and got the ark of the Lord, and they took it down and set it up before Dagon, and Dagon fell on his face and took it to another city, and plagues broke out. That was the hottest thing they ever had on their hands down there, and they couldn't get rid of it because it's out of its place. Now. When they put it on the ox cart and started back, and when David saw the ark coming, you know what he did? He he got so full, his cup got running over the stimulation when he seen the word being revealed back into Israel again. Amen. He danced in the spirit all around, 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 around like that. Amen. Yeah, his cup got to running over. You see, why? He saw the word returning. And I think that would make anybody get a little stimulated when they see after all these years and then the true word by the promise that it would be being brought forth and vindicated. What a time. What a time. Now, let's read. I, I get all talking. I won't get to this and I have you all here till 1030. I let you out early last night, so I ought to keep you a good long time tonight. Amen. <laughs> no, I was just teasing you, see. I'm, uh, we just want, just as the Lord will lead. Now, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come see. Now, when the Lamb had opened the fourth seal, let's stop there now. The fourth seal, now who opened it? The Lamb. Was anybody else worthy? No one else could do it. No, the Lamb opened the fourth seal, and um, the fourth beast, the living creature, like an eagle, said to John, Come see what the 
fourth mystery of the uh, plan of redemption has been hid in this book because the Lamb is opening it. In other words, that's what he was saying. There's a fourth mystery here. I've showed you in symbol. Now, John, I don't know whether you understood or not, but he wrote down what he saw. But it was a mystery. Amen. So he wrote what he saw. The Lamb was breaking the seals, and God still wasn't going to reveal it. It was left for the last day. Amen. See? Now, we had symbols, and we probed at it, and done very good sometimes, see? But we know it's moved right on. But now, in the last days, we can look back and see where it has been. And that is supposed to be done that at the end of the church age, just before the rapture. Amen. How anyone can get the church going through the tribulation, I don't know. But what's it got to go through the tribulation for when it hasn't got, got, hasn't got a sin? I, mean the, I don't mean the church. The church will go through the tribulation. But I'm talking about the bride. Amen. The bride. No, it hasn't got a sin against it at all. It's done been bleached out. Amen. There's not even a... Uh, not even a smell of it. There's nothing left. Amen. They're perfect before God. Amen. So what's in tribulation to purify them? But the others do. The church does go through the tribulation, but not the bride. Amen. Now, now we just took it in all kinds of symbols. Now, like uh, the, the church, Noah, the carried over type, went on out into sin. See? Now, they did go over, but Enoch went first. That was the type of the saints that would go in... Um, and before the tribulation period. Now we find out this lamb opened the seal. Now the first beast we find, if you notice, the first beast we find was a, oh, the first beast was a lion, the living creature. Found that in the book of the, of the church ages. And then the second beast, I believe, was the, the face of an ox or a calf. And the third beast was the face of a man. But the fourth beast was the face of an eagle. Now, that's exactly the way we got them, routining just exactly like that. And that's exactly the way they're even placed in the book here. And then there's a great teacher at one time in Florida teaching, saying that, that the, whole, uh, the book of Acts was just merely a, a scaffold work for the, uh, for the church. The church was found in the four Gospels. And we find vice versa from that, that it's the four Gospels that guards the book of Acts. Amen. It's from those four Gospels that the book of Acts is written, Amen. the Acts of the Holy Spirit in the Apostles. Amen. And we find over the book that them guards are sitting there watching, east, north, west, and south. Remember how we draw it out here and how beautifully, perfectly everything hit just to its spot? Now, I want you to notice Say, come and see. John, now I want you to notice again, before this, now this here is the last of the writers to reveal the working of the Antichrist. Tomorrow night strikes the souls are the altar, the next night the judgments. Next night the going away of, this, of the end of the age, end of time of all things. Amen. When she's taken up, therefore, right in that seventh seal, there pours out bowels and everything else that poured out. What they are, I don't know. Notice. But now, on this year, we find that this fellow here is an eagle, this man, that, or this uh, living creature that's uh, poured for here now. Or in other words, there's four different ages of it. There was an age of the line. And uh, we find out this being the fourth age. And he said, come and see the fourth mystery of the book of redemption that's been hidden in this book. Come see. And John went to see, and he saw a pale horse. And again, the same rider upon this pale horse. Now, he has a name called Death. Now, notice... None of the other rider, none of the other horses, or no time that this rider ever rode, they didn't have that man had no name. But now he is called Death. It's not mentioned. He's revealed now what he is is Death. Well, how we could linger on that for a sermon and make it real plain. 
But anything that's anti, that's against the real, has to be death because there's only two subjects, that's life and death. Amen. And that proves that the Holy Spirit's revelation of this in this day is exactly the truth, the anti. Amen. He's death. Amen. Because the Word, as we'll see later here, is life. Amen. Amen. And this man is called death. Now, it was uh, not mentioned of the other times of this writer, but since now it is mentioned that he's called death. But uh, under the revelation of the line, now watch, I, I want to read this post so I'll be sure I wrote down some place to stand here. Under, not under the revelation of the lion's age or of the first age, the early age, this wasn't revealed. The next age was the age of the ox, which is the dark age, the middle age. It wasn't revealed as what it was. Nor the man-like beast of wisdom, representing the reformers, Luther and Wesley and so forth, it wasn't revealed. But in the eagle age, the last age, the prophetic age, where there is to rise prophetic utterance. Amen. See? Amen. To whom the secrets always comes. Now that's what we just, we're going to linger on that a little while tonight so that you'll thoroughly understand. Now in most times, uh, you realize these, I'm just not speaking to this group here, these tapes go everywhere. See? And I must make it clear because somebody just get one tape. And then if you don't get the rest of them, they're all hung up, see? God has promised this, see? For this day. For the last ending up of all these different things that's going on and being mixed up. We are, we've had Elijah's garments. We've had Elijah's robes. Oh, there's been people. It's John Alexander Dow is buried up there wrapped in a, a robe. He said he was Elijah. And we've had all kinds of things like that. What is it? Anyhow, it's only to take away a truth that is going to be presented. Amen. Amen. They had false Christ before Jesus' time. Amen. See? They always do that. It's Satan running out of counterfeit Amen. to upset the minds and the faith of the people before the thing actually happens. Yes. That's all. Didn't Gamaliel say the same thing to the Jews that day? Said, wasn't there a man raised up and professed to be this? And they took 400 out in the wilderness to perish and so forth. Said, every branch of my heavenly Father hasn't planted Jesus. Said, it'll be rooted up. Gamaliel said, let him alone. If, they, if it be not of God, won't it come to naught? But if it be of God, you'd be found fighting against God. Amen. The man used wisdom. He was a teacher. I notice. Now, to wind up all these mysteries, God has promised that there would be a genuine Elisha rod. Some man anointed with that spirit. Amen. And it would reveal. He promised it in Malachi 4. I got notes and letters that says that that isn't so, but I'd like to talk to that person. Why, you can't deny it. Uh, any real good theologian knows that to be the truth. Amen. That they're looking for it. But it'd just be the same way like it come by John, the forerunner of the first time of Christ. Well, they didn't recognize him Amen. because there's such great things prophesied of him. Why, he was to make all the high places come low. All the low places go high. All the rough places go smooth. <laughs> oh, he, uh, all the prophets... Isaiah, 712 years before his birth, and Malachi, 400 years before he come on the scene. All those prophesied of him. And then expecting some uh, corner of heaven to be let out, and this prophet walked right out with his staff in his hand from God. And what happened? A man that you couldn't even show a fellowship card. <laughs> he couldn't show a credential. Stayed out in the wilderness, not even a common school education. We're told by historians that he left to the wilderness when he was nine years old at the death of his father and mother and was raised out. His job was too important to mess with some seminary. Yes. He, had, he had to announce the Messiah. 
God couldn't use a man all stuffed full of theology. He can't do it because he'll always drift right back. That's his line of learning. He drifts back to that. So when he goes to see something, he tries to drift back to what the teachers have said. Be better if you kept away from them things. And just believe God. And we find that they missed him. Even the apostles stand there and missed him. Or they said, why does the scripture say, the scribes, says that Elias, he said, well, he's already coming. You didn't know him. And that's where I pattern the resurrection or the rapture. It'll go in the... I know that sounds strange, but maybe you'll know a little more after tonight, if the Lord willing, just how it's going to be. See? It'll be so secret, nobody will know about it hardly. The world will just think this score. I don't like it always did, see? It's the way it always does it. You know, I doubt whether one... one I'd say one ninetieth percent of the people on the earth ever know Jesus Christ was here when he was here. You know, when Elijah prophesied, I doubt whether there's hardly anybody know that he was. They know he's a crank up there, some old fanatic, but they hated him. Yeah. The, what, what they call an oddball. I think any born again Christian's kind of an oddball to, to the world because you've been changed. You're from another world. Yeah. Your spirit's from across the chasm. And this thing here is such a messed up thing. You're you're not different. There's something wrong. You, you're still too earthbound. Amen. You got to be uh, heavenly minded. Amen. Heaven lives by the word. Amen. Amen. Now we notice that this uh, this great thing. Uh, taking place. Now we believe that there is to be a coming of the true spirit of Elijah. It's predicted it would be. See? And we must remember it'll be here. In its own season and time, we may be laying a foundation for it now. And it won't be no organization. I, I disagree with a good friend of mine on that. He says there'll be a group of people. I want you to show me that by Scripture. Amen. God, the unchangeable God, never does change His plan. Amen. If He does, then He isn't God. Amen. That's right, because He's a mortal, and He knows just like I do, and He makes mistakes. God has never changed His plan. Since the very time in the Garden of Eden, He made a plan for redemption that was the blood. And we've tried education, we've tried dictatorship, we've tried psychology, we've tried denominationalism, we've tried everything to push everybody together, to love everybody together, and everything else. There's no other place of fellowship but under the blood yet. Amen. The only ground that God meets man. God always deals with one individual. Amen. Two men's got two ideas. Amen. There never was two major prophets on the earth prophesying at the same time. Amen. Look back and see if there was. No, sir. Amen. Too much scribbled up. He's got to get one man completely Amen. surrendered and use that person. Amen. He searches for that person. But there will be one sometime. Amen. Somebody who will listen to him word by word. I don't care what anybody else says. They'll never move from it. That's right. They'll wait on thus saith the Lord. Amen. And uh, they won't move until then. He'll be properly vindicated. You Now the outside world will hate it. But the elected seed, the predestinated seed, like there was in the days of Jesus, when that light flashes, that seed will come to life like that. They'll know it. They'll understand it. You won't have to say a word about it. She said, Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. I know when Messiah comes, he spoke. He said, I mean, boy, that's, that's enough. <laughs> she didn't have Terry all night and Terry the next night. She had it right then. <laughs> she was on a road. <laughs> she was telling him about it. I remember. Now, in the first age was a lion age. That was a line of the tribe of Judah, Christ, his own influence of life. <laughs> Taking that age, that's the first beast, which means power, that answered by human voice. The next age was the ox age or the dark horse riders age. See? Now, the reason this first age was a white age was that, as I've always heard people say, that that first rider, the white, was a power the church went forth to conquer, and we found out he was given a crown. If that was it, it was the church. It was the church. But where did he go to? Amen. <laughs> went to Rome. Yeah. Where he did, he got, received his crown. Now, the second age was a, was a red horse rider, which was a dark age. And now, now the, the next age was the, uh, 
the man of the of age, which was the black horse rider, and he was the age of the reformers. See? When there's a voice that spoke, now the black horse rider, that was Antichrist. But the one that was speaking in that age was represented as man. And that's the wisdom, smart, shrewd. See? And they didn't get it. See? Amen. They didn't call it. They didn't name him. See? They just said it went forth. But now when comes forth the eagle age, Amen. that's the one that God always likens his prophets to eagles. Amen. He calls himself an eagle. Yeah. The eagle goes so high, there ain't nothing else can touch him. Amen. Not only is he up there, but he's built for that position. Amen. When he gets up there, you can see where he's at. Some people get up there and can't see where they're at, so they don't get to get up there. But if you, but uh, you let a crow try to fly with an eagle or a hawk, either one, he'd disintegrate. <laughs> he's got to be pressurized for where he goes. That's the trouble today. Some of us don't get pressurized. We explode too quick. You see when we're jumping. But we got to be pressurized when you get up there and have the keen sight of the eagle to see what's coming and know what to do. Now the eagle age revealed it. Now we find out that eagle age was promised in Revelations 10, 7 and, and Malachi 1, 4 that it would be in the last days. That's right. That um, it would be here. All right. Notice. Now this fella... We find out that he's riding on a pale horse. Pale. Oh, my. After, notice, after 68 million Protestants, as we took from, from uh, Smucker's uh, uh, Glorious Reform or the, or the Martyrology of Rome last night, we find that up to the 1500 mark, I believe it was, or 18, I don't remember exactly now, but it was 68 million put to death yeah. to protest the first Roman church. Oh, no wonder he could impersonate himself in the persified uh, name of and call death. <laughs> he sure was. Now, God only knows how many He caused to spiritually die by His anti-Bible word teaching. Amen. This is the one He put 68 million to the sword and killed. And probably literally billions died spiritually on His false teaching. Amen. No wonder He could take the name of death. See the writer? The first place, as an antichrist, He was death to begin with. But he's an innocent man. Then he received a crown, a triple one. And when he did, then he united, Satan united his church and state because he is over both of them then. Antichrist was Satan in the form of a man. And then also uh, St. Uh, Matthew, I believe it is, the fourth chapter tells us that that. Satan took Jesus, our Lord, up and showed him the kingdoms of the world, all of them, in a moment of time, and the glory of them, offered them to him. And he said, they, they were his. Amen. So you see, then if he can unite his state and his church together, then the red horse rider could ride sure enough. Amen. See, Amen. Truly. Now, then we find out this mystery here in his church and state. The fourth stage of his ministry, he's called the beast. First, he's called the Antichrist. See? Then he's called the false prophet. And he's called the beast. Now, we find him here being called as the beast. Now, I want you to notice, that's after the fourth horse. And in this fourth horse, if you'll notice, all the first one was white. And then the next one was red. And the next one was black. And the fourth one, all of these other three was representing it because pale is red and, and uh, white and so mixed together. Amen. See? It, it is all mixed in this one horse. <laughs> See? And there he become four, or actually the three in one. And it's all mixed up in that one thing. I want you to notice the four of them 
Notice the off mark of four of the spiritual mathematics. God is threes. <laughs> this is four. He's in four here. First, Antichrist, white. Second, false prophet, red. Third, biker of heavens and earth and purgatory, black. Fourth, the beast, pale horse, Satan being kicked out of heaven. Do you want to read that? Revelations 12 and 13. Satan being kicked out of heaven. Then in Revelation 13, 1, 8, he is incarnate in the person of the beast. Amen. Amen. He's first the Antichrist. Yes, it's the teaching called Nicolaitia. Then he becomes from that to a false prophet. If he's an Antichrist, Antichrist is against anything that's against God's Word, is against God because the Word is God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the Word was made flesh, Christ, and dwelt among us. And now He is against the Word, so He be anti-Christ. But a spirit cannot be crowned. That's the reason He didn't receive a crown, just a bow with no arrows. And then when He come to crowning time, then He become the false prophet of His antichrist teaching. Get it? Then he gets a sword because he unites his powers together. Then he don't have to ask nobody. He's governor of state. He's governor of heaven. Receives a triple crown. Makes himself an idea called purgatory where if some of them died back there and he got some money he want to pay him out, he can pray him out of it. Because he's got the power to do so. He's a biker. There he is. He takes the place of God on earth. That is as plain as anything. We find it, put it on down through the Bible, and count his numeral numbers and everything else. Here he is, Clay, right back here, in number four. Not number three, number four. See? Now let's turn. Revelation is 12. Let's just read this just a little bit, because we, we'll have time to do it. And um, let's read uh, Revelation, the, the 12th chapter, and the 13th verse. And the same hour, there was a great earthquake. No, I got the, I got the wrong place. Uh, 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast out into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Now I see he was cast out of the earth and becomes incarnate as the Antichrist spirit become incarnate into a man. That man changes from one thing to another. From an Antichrist spirit to a false prophet, and then the beast comes into him. Just exactly like the church grows, his church went from, from Antichrist to false prophet, and in the great age to come, the beast that is to rise up. So the church comes the same way through justification, sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost is Christ being in the people. Amen. Just exactly, and he's got the anti type of it over there. The, see, the type of it, rather. There he is. Just exactly, that's him. He's kicked out of heaven. Now we find out in Revelations 13, 1 to 8. And I stood up on the sands of the sea and saw a beast rise up. Now here's 12, where he was kicked out. Now watch. Saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns ten crowns. And upon his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard in his feet. Oh, if we just had time now, we'd take the rest of the night right on them symbols there and show, bring it right straight to him again. And he, most all of you know that from other lessons. Were the feet of a bear and his mouth, the mouth of a lion and a dragon, give him his power, seat, and authority. <laughs> Incarnate Satan. Amen. Amen. I saw one of his heads is wounded to death and on down his, we go if you want, when you get a chance to read on down. Now, let's, let's read this a little bit. And I saw one of his heads as it was wounded death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. You just watch. Don't you never watch communism. It's nothing but a tool playing in the hands of God to help you someday to get, revenge the blood as we'll get tomorrow night. And they worship the dragon. Who was the dragon? Satan. Isn't that right? The red dragon. All right, which gave power unto the beast, where you get his power, see? And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? There was given unto him a mouth speaking great things of blasphemy, and power was given to him to continue forty and two months, and he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God. 
carry your deal on. To blaspheme his name. Give him a title. His tabernacle, which is the Holy Spirit's dwelling place to make it a place in Rome, a Vatican City. You can just go on down. And then to dwell in heaven. Blaspheme them, but saying they were intercessors. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. And he did. And to overcome them, he did. Burn them to the stake, fed them to the lions, and kill them any way he could. And power was given to him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. It never did become that way in Rome until pagan Rome was converted into papal Rome and the Catholic power spread the world. Amen. Made the universal Catholic Church. Amen. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names were not written in the book. Touch not my all in mine. See? And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names were not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man has an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth the captivity shall go into captivity. He that killed with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. Now we had him coming last night with his great sword to kill. We find out that he gets killed with the sword too. The sword of the word. God's word, sharp to a sword. Slays him, puts him right down. Wake them seven thunders, utter their voices to that group who really can take the word of God and hand it there. It'll slice and cut them. They can close the heavens, they can shut this or do that, whatever they want to. You'll be slayed by the word that proceeds from his mouth is sharper than a two-edged sword. They could call for a hundred billion tons of flies if they wanted to. Amen. Whatever they say is going to happen because it's a word of God coming from the mouth of God. Amen. Amen. God always, it's his word, but he always uses man to work it. God could call for flies down in Egypt, but he said, Moses, that's your job. I'll just tell you what to do and you go do it. He fully done that. See, he could have chosen the sun to call him. He could cause the moon to call it or the wind to call it. But he, he said Moses. That, that he chose his man. All right. Now we find out here that this Satan, after being kicked out of heaven, incarnates himself in the beast. And now he is a beast. Antichrist. False prophet. And now beast. And given the name of death. And hell follows him. Fully Satan on his throne. Oh, my. On the earth. He's Satan representative on the earth. That he now is head of the kingdoms of the world. The very same kingdoms that he offered to the Lord Jesus in Matthew 4. Satan now becomes a full king. Now, this happens later on. He's false prophet now. He will become beast after a while when he breaks his covenant there at the Jews. You know how we... All right. Notice now, he'd be given the heart of a beast at that time and Satan will incarnate himself because when the church goes up, Satan's cast out. Oh, yeah. It's done, man. It's all these accusing is done. See, as long, look, as long as the intercessor is still on the throne, Amen. Satan can stand there and accuse. Because he is the attorney of the other side. He is the opponent of Christ. And Christ is, he's standing there, the, the, the opponent is standing there saying, but wait, Adam fell. Adam done this. I conquered him. I got his wife to believe a lie. He said she'd be damned by it. I got it. But here's the mediator standing there. Amen. 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 The kinsman redeemer. Right. Amen. Amen. Stand there with a blood that can take the smallest sinner's heart and change it. The mediator is on the throne. Yes, sir. Satan said, but they're guilty. He can say they're not. That's Clorox was invented or manufactured to take stain. Hallelujah. Take the color out of ink or any other stain. The God, it'll break it up to you. You never will find it again. It goes back to gases and all the way back to cosmic light and the past molecules and everything else. So it turns back to the original. Where it comes from? It's a creation head. A creation head to come from a creator. 
But all the chemicals that was manufactured and put together, they're broke up, and that's just all there is to it. There's no more of it. Hallelujah. Even the very, the very water substance it is blends with the Clorox, which is ashes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. It's all clean. That's what the blood of Jesus Christ does to the true child of God when he confesses that sin and stands there justified in his uh, mercy, goodness. Even it's so great to God said I can't even remember it anymore. And he's absolutely my son. Hallelujah. Really, I say to you, if you say to this mountain, be moved, it don't doubt in your heart, but believe in what you said to you, so come to pass, you can have that what you said to you. You are a redeemed son. Amen. I know that's true. I've seen squirrels appear on our own six different times that I knew not the one that would be sitting here. He just as he could create squirrels the same as he create flies or frogs or anything else. He's God the creator. Right. And when no mortal being, but when that sin of that mortal is confessed and dropped into that Clorox of the bleach of Jesus Christ that bleaches all sin, he's purely unadulterated, without sin, without fault. He that's born of God does not commit sin, for he cannot sin. Stands between him and God. How can it ever get there? When it breaks it up, it sends it right back to the one who perverted it. Hey, I feel religious. I, I tell you, I get stimulations now. As this begins to reveal. Notice, fully Satan on his throne. Yes, sir, offered it to God, offered it to our Lord. Here he is sitting here with this beastly heart in him. Now, here is the person, the beast, the incarnate devil. He makes his appearing here on earth under the false pretense. Oh my goodness. Under the false pretense of the true word, he associates himself with the word. He did just the same thing that his, his type did, which was Judas 2,000 years ago. What did he do? Judas came in as a believer, being a devil from the beginning. Amen. He was born the son of perdition. He pulled nothing over on Jesus because he knowed him from the very beginning. Amen. Amen. For he was the word. Amen. All right. And remember, Judas took the place as treasure and fell by money. So does the church of this day. The Catholic Church, as we noticed last night, charge him for an obedience, charge him for uh, prayers, and charge him for everything. It's almost same, it fell the same thing to the daughters of the Catholic Church, which the Protestant, the whole thing's wrapped up in money. That's where Judas fell, and here's where he fell, and that's where the Protestants fall. Watch, rides a pale horse <laughs> as he appears on his ride. This last ride. He's on his last now. Now that is not in our day. That will be on down. It's a seal foretold. Of course, see the church has done gone up when this happens. When Christ appears here on earth as, Ju as, um, as this fellow appears and becomes completely, completely the devil from Antichrist all the way down to false prophet then into the beast, the devil himself. Hallelujah. And he's riding on a pale horse, colored all up, mixed with all kinds of colors to make him pale and deathly. But when our Lord appears here Hallelujah. on earth, he'll be riding on a snow white horse and he'll be completely, fully the Emmanuel, the Amen. Word of God incarnate in a man. Amen. Well, yeah, just how much difference there is in it. Hallelujah. That's the difference of it. Notice, the Antichrist is on a pale horse, mixed colors. A horse is a beast that represents a power. His power is all mixed up. Why? It's politics. Amen. It's, um, it's national powers. It's uh, religious powers. It's demon powers. It's all kinds of powers mixed together. A mixed pale horse was. He's got all kinds of powers. 
But when Jesus comes, it's on a one solid color horse. Amen. The Word. Amen. 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 This one mixes its colors of red, white, black. Three colors in one, represented in one. And three powers represented in one. The white horse, the black horse, red horse. And three crowns in one. <laughs> Sure. I seem to crown myself. Amen. Just all oh, that close looked at it. But let me get to it on kind of glass now. So there it was, big lock on it, set in a case, triple crown. So I know it's the truth. Amen. <laughs> so there he was, triple crown. Biker, heaven, purgatory, and earth. Three powers united together. See? All mixed up in a color, pale. <laughs> Death spoke in a whole thing. Political and, and religious and, and demon powers Amen. mixed together. Politics. He is the king of politics. Satan is. Smart. Sure, don't try to outwit him. Just, just trust the law. Amen. I've all went through it before. All smart educations and things like that come from the wrong side. Amen. Just follow through the scripture. Find out that's right. Follow Cain's children see what they become. Amen. Then follow Seth's children see what they Amen. become. <laughs> Not as I'm supporting ignorance. Not at all. No, sir. But you take any person's hardly of the Bible, very seldom, and it, there's one named Paul that was a smart man, and he said he had to forget everything he knew in order to know Christ. Amen. He said, I never come to you with enticing words of wisdom of man, but I come to you in the power of the resurrection of Christ. Amen. That's right. Amen. The power of the Holy Ghost. Look at the others. Some of them didn't even know right to left hand. And, and all. I look down through the age of the prophets and where they come from and so forth. See what I mean? See, it's a smart, intellectual, and wisdom. Wisdom is exactly the very thing that takes you away from God. Hallelujah. He had three powers or three, three jurisdictions, the earth, heaven, and purgatory. He is himself a trinity. That's what he's made up of. And he rides in a trinity. His power's in a trinity. His crown's in a trinity. His horse is in a trinity. Amen. Is that what he is? A trinity, a power of trinity, a crown of trinity, <coughs> a horse riding of trinity, that's of offices, a four again. Hallelujah. See? A four again. All right. Three stages of his ministry makes him one person, Satan incarnate. Three stages of the many. Antichrist, false prophet, and beast. And three. Typing. See, now these three types. Now that makes him, God, uh, God makes himself known too. And water, blood, spirit makes a Christian a son of God by the word of God. See? And these three powers makes him a devil. See? All of this shares is water, blood, and spirit, which is of God. And that's po politics, religion, and demon power mixed together makes him the devil. Amen. Christ, first coming, a mortal. He comes three times. Christ is in three. Amen. Watch how he comes. He's a four. Watch Christ. First coming, he come a mortal to bleed and die. Is that right? That's his first coming. The second coming is the rapture. We meet him in the skies, immortal. His third coming, he's the incarnate God. Amen. <laughs> God Emmanuel for reign on earth. Right. Twenty three. Four stage of the rider. What? The fourth stage of this rider is called death. Death means eternal separation from God. That's what death means. To be eternal separated from God. Now, if we place this fellow out, place. If we have showed by the Bible who that fellow is, and we even took the hills of place and every word just exactly detailed right on down. And now he's called by the eagle death. Amen. That's what he calls him. Remember here, see, death is eternal separation. Remember, saints don't die. They sleep. Amen. Not die. He that heard my words and believed on him and sent me has eternal life. That's right. 
shall not come into the judgments, pass from death unto life. I am the resurrection life, said Jesus. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Amen. Lazarus dead, he sleepeth. Amen. Fear not, the girl's not dead, but sleepeth. They laughed in the scorn. Is that right? Amen. Oh, my. See, saints don't die. Separation from God is death. Eternal death. And this fellow is called death. Amen. So keep away from him. Amen. Why is he an organiz organizational system, the first? Amen. Number one church, organized. And when he took the, the understanding of Constantine at the Nicaea Council... We brought them women last night and showed how that Eve, the first bride, before her husband ever got to her, she fell by disbelieving God's Word in Eden. The spiritual bride that was born on the day of Pentecost of Christ, before he could get to her, what happened? She fell at Rome. What? Forfeited her virtue of the Word for dogma. Amen. Amen. Oh, my. I, I feel stimulation coming again. <laughs> I don't mean to act crazy. I don't mean that. But I just, you don't realize what that does to me. I've been sitting in this for four days now. Just, and so I have to say something and kind of get me feeling human again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Start talking like that and you see visions breaking all over the place. Right. Maybe that's the reason I say something to get myself back again. Shake back again. Jerry knows me when I have a discerning line. I'll say something to make people laugh. Then I'll say something to make people cry. Then I'll say something to make them angry. I've got something spotted out. I'll say something to see how it takes, then I'll see what kind of lights over and what takes place. I don't know where it's at. I don't know where it's calling or not. It isn't. That's our genuine believer. All right. You call them and say, you so-and-so. And when you get down, spirit begins to anoint them, you begin to see that flashing coming everywhere. See how I get around, around the room. So that's the reason I say something, kind of start back again, start off new again, see. I did, ever since last Sunday, I just sat right in a room, just praying, that's all, under the anointing. And, uh, I know this is right. Amen. If you believe God, I know you do. You just watch the Amen. end of the week. <laughs> oh, glory. Hallelujah. See? Now, death means eternal separation from God. You remember, now, saints don't die. Remember... His bride was given a pale horse. I mean, this rider was given a pale horse to, um, uh, to go forth with. He was given this, this pale horse to go forth with. And he rode this pale horse of death. Now, we know what that was. We know what church that was. And remember, and last night, she was not only a whore... <laughs> She was a mother of harlots. Amen. And we find out that what made her a whore was a woman that's that type of a woman. I miss, it's a flat word to say amongst a mixed audience, but the Bible says that. You see. So then we realize that that's a, that's a woman that lives untrue to her marriage vows. And you see, she's supposed to be, says herself, calls herself the queen of heaven. That would be the bride of God. God is Christ. And we find that she's committing fornication. And she's causing the kings of the earth to commit fornication. And all the rich men and great men, the whole earth went after her. See? And then we find out that she produced some daughters. And they were harlots. What is a harlot? But a whore, the same thing. A fornicator. <laughs> Fornications. Evil. Adulteries. Committing what to do? Organized. Got a system. Taught the man-made systems. Pentecost and a whole bunch. Amen. Now, don't let your, your conscience drop down your pocket, Pentecost. But let me tell you something. Let's look the thing right in the face. We're too late down the road now to go to pull the punches. Look here. We are living in the Lady of Sin church age, and that was the most ridiculous church age of all the rest of them. Amen. A lukewarm and the only one that Christ was on the outside trying to get back in, and that's the Pentecostal yes. message. Amen. Amen. That I'm rich, boy. You was poor first. Now you, you really got rich, see? Haven't needed nothing. And, and oh, what you was, you said, you're naked, miserable, blind, poor, wretched, and don't even know it. Oh, now, if a man was naked out there on the street and knowed it, well, he'd try to help himself. But when he, 
When if you don't know it, you can't tell him no different, then he's in a bad shape. God have mercy upon him. Notice. Oh, my. Now, remember, this Antichrist himself, being the man, his bride, which is his church, was given a space to repent, and she did not do it. And that church age, Thyatira. You remember? Amen. Can you, well, let's go back just a minute. It won't hurt us to go back just a minute. Let's uh, go back first, second chapter. <coughs> just a minute. We'll just read it. Second chapter of... Uh, now, Thyatira. Now, watch this this right quick now. My, we're just about closing time. I haven't got started. But notice, Thyatira. Now it begins at the 18th verse of the, of the second chapter. Unto the angel, that's the messenger, of the church of Thyatira, write these things, saith the Son of God, who has his eyes like unto flames and his feet uh, like unto fine brass. I know thy works and thy charity and thy service and thy faith, thy patience and the works and uh, uh, has to be more than the, and the last be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou suffers that woman Jezebel. Yeah. There you are. Amen. You know her in the Bible. She was the wife of Ahab. And here is the woman, church Jezebel, the wife of the false prophet, which is supposed to be the genuine prophet of God, the Pope. Right. A genuine prophet and his wife, Jezebel. Now, Ahab was supposed to be a genuine Jew, but he was a rascal. You know that. Because his wife just let him any way he wanted to. We find out Jezebel takes her money and leads these the way they want to, too. Which calls herself a prophetess. Get it? To teach and subdue my servants. See, that Jezebel teaching has swept the country. Amen. To commit fornications, to eat things, a sacrifice to idols. I gave her space to repent Amen. See, Amen. of her fornications, and she repented not. Watch this next verse. I will cast her into a bed. That's hell. And them that commit adultery with her unto great tribulations. That's going into the great tribulation, not the church now. Except they repent of their deeds. Now, watch out here. I will kill her children, her harlots, with death. Amen. Spiritual death. Amen. You believe it? Yes. That's, that's the word. I will kill them with death. If they're killed, they're eternal separated. <laughs> All right. Remember, he gave her a space to repent. The entire age was a dark age. The dark horse rider rode in that time when all the masses and everything had to be paid for and the prayers and, and the novenias and so forth. Now, see his black horse then? After he refused to repent in Thyatira, what? Changes his riding from a black horse to a pale one, death, for his last ministry. Wow. I might just give the individual a little shake here. To refuse God. To refuse God's call. You'll do it the last time sometime. And just like that church did, it's over. God... Patience will not always strive with man. See? And when she refused it and refused to accept it, then she changed and went, and now she's got a name called death separation. God said, I'll even take her children, the Protestants, and every one of them I'll kill with eternal separation. Yeah. There you are. Our Tyra age, the dark age, the black horse now turns to death for his last ministry. See how the church ages blend in with the seals? It's perfect. And we know it's right. The Holy Spirit makes no mistake. He gave us a great vindication the last time when we got the church ages done back there, you know. <clears throat> See the loving, long-suffering of God. 
before he passed judgment upon her, he gave her a place to repent. And it's in the name of the Lord I say this. He's given the Protestant church the same thing and she won't do it. <laughs> Message is shook everywhere. And she won't do it. She's going to have her own dogmas and creeds. I don't care how much she explain it. As I said, there in Chicago today, four more ministers than our people sitting here. And there, they had me pinned off about the doctrine of serpent seed and all this other thing. I said, somebody get your Bible and come here and stand by me then. And nobody said nothing. Tommy Hicks said, I, I never heard that like that before, Brother Brandon. I want 300 of those tapes. I want to send them all my ministers. There's about 50 or 75 that said, I'm coming down there to be rebaptized. Did they come? Not a one of them. Why? You give them space to repent. And you'll cast your children to death. Spiritual death. We pick that up tomorrow night, the Lord willing, or Saturday night, on those plagues that passes over. You watch what takes place there. Like you give Egypt. He gave Egypt a place to repent. What was that last plague? It was death. That's the last plague that's hit the Pentecostal church. It's spiritual death. She's dead. Amen. That's in the name of the Lord. Yeah. She's spiritually yeah. dead. Yeah. He gave her place to repent and she rejected it. Now she's dead. She'll never rise again. And then people out there are trying to bring in Episcopalians and priests and so forth and call them Holy Father, so and so. To, why they ought to be ashamed of themselves. Yeah. How blind can man get? Yeah. So Jesus say when that sleeping virgin come to, to buy oil, she did not get it. Yeah. Right. Amen. Everybody in here, people say, I got the Holy Ghost, I spoke in tongues, but they don't want to come around a church like this. Oh, uh, you know, I don't believe I want to go around a place like that. And then say, you got the Holy Ghost? Amen. But you want your dignified ways. You want to stay in Babylon and still enjoy the blessings of heaven. Right. You have to make your choice. Yes. Yes. Right. You can't stay out there in the world and serve God at the same time. Jesus said you couldn't serve God in mammon. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you want to expect, if you really get saved, you enjoy meetings where the Holy Spirit is vindicating itself and showing Amen. that the Word of God is so. Someone said that people make too much noise. It makes me nervous. You'll be nervous if you get to heaven. If you just think when all of them are there. <laughs> then what about it? Oh, my. How the Lord wants to get his long suffering like it was in the days of Noah. He tried hard. He suffered long for 120 years to get them to repent. They wouldn't do it. In the days of Egypt, he sent plagues and everything else. They wouldn't do it. He sent John. They wouldn't return. He sent Jesus to die to save the whole group that would hear the word. Yeah, and now in the last days, he promised again that he would send a message to call her out and restore the original faith back to it, back to the word. And they won't receive it. They're so dogmatic in their dogmas and creeds so they don't want Or they think they had a, if an angel walked down, but God don't do that. He takes something ignorant and stupid, something that don't know how to your ABCs or anything, and then he takes that type of a person because he can take something that's nothing and then work through it. As long as something thinks or something, then they can do nothing with it. He always did that. He had to become nothing to become somebody with God. Oh, my. I notice. Yeah, he gave her space to repent, but she didn't do it. He's done it again. She won't do it. Her rejection away makes her, or her rejection makes the perfect way for Satan to come into her and be incarnate. Amen. Right. Incarnate himself right in her because she rejected the word. And that's exactly the same thing that the Protestant church becomes a harlot is because she rejects the vindicated truth of the word of God and that gives the devil a place to come right in and incarnate himself and he'll make an image unto the beast when they consolidate together right yonder now. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. 
If I had an education, I could bring it out. I haven't got no education. I'm just expecting the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. He will to those who... That's right. He'll do it. Notice. Look. How, what she did here, she rejected God's message for her to repent. She started off an Antichrist. And that's what she was. She became a false prophet. An incarnate devil. And what she did with her false teaching. And then in all of that, God gave her space to repent. Try to get her. See how long suffering? Amen. What a wonderful love. There's no love like that. Amen. Look at those even spit in his face and things. He forgave them. That's God. See? Don't reject God's message. Look, she was asked to repent. Go back to where she fell from. And where did she fall from? The Word. Now, where did he fall from? Where did the denomination fall from? There you are. Amen. No other way, just say everything I'm trying, right back to the Word. Right. right back to the Word. Amen. And they get into a system that runs them back away from the Word. Amen. Runs them from the Word instead of to the Word. Amen. Notice, look, she was given the space to repent, go back. Repent means to go back, turn back, about face, repent, go back. And she was given a space to go back to where that... Now remember, she was the original Pentecostal church that the Holy Ghost was poured up on on the day of Pentecost. Amen. How many Bible students knows that? Amen. Sir, she was. See where she went from? She fell from the Word and accepted dogma. She expe- instead of the Holy Ghost, she wanted the Holy Man. Dr. L-L-P-H-Q-U and then made him a Pope. Amen. <laughs> Sure, but she, that's what she wanted. Somebody to do her praying, somebody she could pay her money out, and that's all she had to do. Mm-hmm. Now, it's the same thing they do. As long as they got a pew to set in, play heavy on the collection plate, that's good enough. They're a member of that church. Don't tell them nothing else about it. They won't. That's her daughter. Now, where did she fall from? From the original word of the apostolic apostles and prophets. That's where she fell from. That's where the Protestant fell from. Repent. Go back. Turn back before it's too late. It ain't already too late. One of these days that lamb will leave his place and then it's all over. So as her daughter has been asked now before being judged with her to return back. Now the last message they get is when this prophet that I've been speaking of, which I've been reading many books about it, and I know that a real good, sensible, spiritual thinking man knows that that's coming. Yeah. Yeah. Know it's coming see. They, but the trouble of it is, they keep saying we need it, it's going to be, and when it comes, they'll be so humble, oh, they'll probably miss it just like they did the other time. Yeah. People are right about it, and everything, say, oh yes, it needs to be, and then let it be showed right before them, and they just go right on. So we've always done that. Watch now. The original word, they, re- they she has to repent to go back at. So her daughters is being asked to be forced. They will be judged and thrown into the same bed and killed with her. They've been asked to turn back to the original word, go back to the apostolic doctrine, but they're so tied down with their creeds and things, they won't do it. They only make fun of it. Then, what do they do? They finally form up in the image unto the beast. Another power. Notice. And act to the Lamb's bride like she did in Revelation 13, 14. <laughs> That's what they do. Just persecute just the same thing. The churches make just as fun of the true bride of Christ as Rome ever did. Yeah. Just as that. Uh-huh. Uh, sir, act to the, the real Lamb's bride just as like, like she did in Revelation 13, 14. Now notice. We see by God's word of promise He will, uh, he will uh, kill her Children, the denominations, her daughters with spiritual death. Now that's Revelations 2.22. Don't forget it. To kill is to put to death and death is eternal separation from the presence of God. Think of that, friends. Think of that. Won't you trust in any man-made creed? Anything is contrary to what you keep away from it. Now watch. Watch in the Bible here. It said his name was Hell. I mean, his name is death, and hell followed that tree. Now, hell always follows death in the natural. 
When a natural man dies, hell follows him. That's the grave, Hades, see? That in the natural. But in the spiritual, it's a lake of fire, see? Yeah. All right? It's eternal separation where they're burnt up. And Malachi 4 said, don't even leave in stubble or branch or nothing else. It's a way the world has of purifying itself again for the millennium, see? Have you noticed? <clears throat> the rider is a he. And he had in his hand. Man, false prophet, but his bride is called the church, she, Jezebel. Ahab, Jezebel. Why, well, it's just as perfect as anything. Isn't it? Daughters is she also, but never received one man headship. Protestants to that. But still harlot in principle of their doctrine. Denomination. Systems. That's, just, that's what it says. Notice, what is this all coming to? Now, we just got about 12, 14 minutes here, I guess. Look what this is all coming to. What is it? It's going right back the way it did and started, and heaven is coming to the end time battle. Amen. The first thing in heaven was a battle. Lucifer was kicked out and comes to the earth. Then he polluted Eden. Then he's been polluting ever since. And now, from the battle in heaven... It's coming to the battle on earth. And it is to be finished at, on earth at the end time in a battle called Armageddon. Yeah. Amen. Now, anyone knows that? The battle started in heaven. Holy. So they kicked them out. Michael and his angels overthrew them. They run out. And when they did drop right down to Eden, and here started the battle down here. God had his children all fortified up by his word. And Eve stuck her neck out to I believe you're right. And, they, and there it went. Yeah. And it's been ever since. Yeah. Then God come down, and now he's got the, he come down to redeem those who would come down. As I said, God's like a big contractor. He lays out all his material on the earth. And then he builds his buildings. Now remember, before there was a grain of, of seed on the earth, before there was a sun that ever struck the earth, your body was laying on the earth. Because you are the dust of the earth. Amen. Amen. You are. God is the contractor. Now, the way he was going to do it was reach down and get like he did Adam. A little bunch of calcium, potash, and cosmic light. And, say, there's my other son. Okay? Then he'd bring up some more. There's another one. But what did Eve do? She corrupted that way and she brought it. So a sexual act. Then death struck it. Amen. Now, what's God doing? He's got so many of those seeds down through there that's predestinated, so much that's predestinated. And then at the end time, he won't say, Eve, come bear another child. He'll call and I'll answer. <laughs> that's the idea. Amen. When that last one's brought in, that settles it. Now, the battle started in heaven. It'll be finished on earth in the form of Armageddon. Now, let's watch and see it unfold. And maybe we can unfold it. The Lord help us right now to do this now. Watch it unfold. The mysterious rider, watch what he does now. Oppose, refuse to repent, and to go back to the original blood word. The word became blood and flesh. He refused to go back to it. Is Antichrist. The true word bride is a, he's opposed to the true word bride. Takes his own bride, he opposes this uh, true bride to, and he takes his own bride and brings her to him in a form of religion called creeds and dogmas. Amen. See? Amen. And now, seeing the holy bride, he is against her. But he forms his own bride called Antichrist by Antichrist teaching which is contrary to Christ. See how shrewd he is? Amen. And now instead of having a unity of love controlling, worship under blood, he's got a denomination. Amen. Instead of having the word, he took creeds, dogmas, and so forth. Like in the Protestant says, the Apostles' Creed. I want you to find a word of it in the Bible. Apostles, there ain't no Apostles' Creed in the Bible. 
But I said, you're not know, long ago or somewhere, if the apostles had a creed, it's Acts 2.38. Amen. Yes, that's all I know he ever had. That's what they called everybody to do. When he found one of them, it looked like they were Christians. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? He said, we know where to be. He said, then how was you baptized? Amen. Amen. Now, being baptized in the Jesus' name, uh, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, rather, that, that's all right, but that's not all of it yet. Amen. No, sir. You can be baptized 50 times like that and don't do a bit of good until that heart's changed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. It all has to go together. Yeah. Notice, it's, it's Christ, the Antichrist, refuses the true bride doctrine, and therefore he takes his own bride now and builds her up under a creed of his own. Takes his own bride and makes her a denomination. She gives birth to other denominations as quoted in this Holy Scripture. Gives birth to daughters. And um, she don't, she becomes just like her mother. Natural, worldly, denominational. Opposing the spiritual bride, the Word. They don't say they don't belong to church. You talk to a denominational person. Sure, I belong to church. Are you a Christian? I belong to church. That don't have one thing to do with it. Amen. You don't belong to church. You, you might belong to what's called a church. Okay? Belong to a church. That's not a church. That's not churches. And lodges. Amen. Where people get together, uh, people like birds of a feather. But you're only one church. And that's the mythical body of Christ. Amen. And you don't join that. You're born in it. Amen. I've always said, I've been to the Brandon family 53 years and never did join it. <laughs> I was born in it. Now, notice, it's just typed beautifully. I, I got the scripture wrote down here, but I, we ain't got time to get to it. As Esau and Jacob. Now, Esau was a religious man. He didn't claim to be an unbeliever. He believed in the same God Jacob did. Same God his daddy did. But he was just a shyster, or excuse the expression, just, he was just no good. He, he, he was, as far as being morally, he was really a, a better moral acting man than Jacob was. But you see, he didn't think, oh, what's that birthright got to do with it? And he sold his birthright to Jacob. See? But Jacob, he didn't have big things like Esau did. He didn't have the inheritance he did. But there's one thing Jacob wanted was that birthright, and he didn't care how he had to get it. <laughs> He's going to get it. And God had respect to him. And then... That's the same thing today with the natural man, carnal mind, worldly minded. Well, I belong to the state church. I belong to this church. I belong to that. That don't have one thing to do with it. Not a thing. Watch. Gathers them now on his mixed colored horse. He's gathering them together on his mixed colored horse because he's got political power. You don't believe he has? How did this president get in this now? How did that ever slip up? <laughs> Come over here for freedom of religion, and you bunch of Democrats <laughs> that would sell your birthrights out to politics. I ain't got Democrat parties are they're both rotten. I'm talking about Christianity, but you sell your birthrights on a Democrat ticket to put something like that in. Same one. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't you realize that this nation exactly is in a pattern of Israel? What did Israel do? She come over to a strange land and took the occupants out and killed them off and went in and possessed the land. That's what we did, the Indians. That's the only true American there is, is our Indian friends. And then what did they do? Israel had a few great men. First thing you know, uh, they had David and they had Solomon. They had great men. And finally they got a renegade up there, Ahab, that married a Jezebel, an unbeliever. Well, that's the same thing we did. We had a Washington and a Lincoln, but look what we got now. Amen. And the very thing of it is, he's married and sows down and died in the wool to Jezebel. Amen. He might be a pretty good sort of a feller, but she's going to run the business. 
You see it right now. The whole family's coming in. Amen. What did the Holy Spirit tell me about 35 years ago? And I know you old timers know it. Of seven things that happened before it did, and this is the last, next to last thing coming up. Amen. Everything else hit just exactly on the dot to the wars and everything else. Amen. And now she's right in the hands of a woman to rule the nation, Jezebel. See? But remember, in the days of Jezebel, someone really told them their colors. Uh, gathering them on their mixed colored horses. He's gathering his thing together. Mixed with creeds, denominations, man made doctrines. Is that right? Sure. A mixed color. The mixed color of the dead, pale horse of the world. Now, that's right. Mixed colors of the dead, whirly form of the pale horse. Oh, my. No holy blood of the word at all. And watch. From corner, from the four corners of the earth, they gather them. <laughs> Gathers them to Armageddon, the Bible said. I'm trying to think of the scriptures that i got to roll down here. I ain't calling them, but just where they're written down and see what they are. Gathers them together to the great day of the battle of the Lord God. Watch. Now on this mixed, colored, whirly, pale, sick horse. Just think of it. You know, that's a bad thing. Now watch where he gathers them. From the four corners of the earth. They're gathering now for the showdown. The showdown will be at Armageddon according to the word. See? On the pale horse, riding on it with a death tack, with a name tack on him, death. The Antichrist, listen, Antichrist, first denomination. That can't be disputed. Amen. With his Jezebel, a prostitute to the word. Amen. With her daughters, with her. Amen. Protestants. Gathering themselves together now in unity. Did you hear the Baptist people speak the other day over here, you know? Huh? Oh, we won't join up with them, but we'll, we'll, we'll be friendly and kind of clicking with them. We won't have to join the church, but there you are. Yeah. There you are. Just exactly what the Word said. Yeah. Old harlot in the first place. See? Yeah. Now, here they are, joining themselves together, coming to that showdown to Armageddon and riding on a mixed-colored horse yeah. with one horse of white, one horse of red, one horse of black. The three different political uh, political power, spiritual power, controlled by demon power, which is the Antichrist. Mixing that all together, you got a pale, sickly-looking thing he's riding on. Amen. Right. Amen. I noticed. Amen. Look what he's riding on, this pale-looking, grizzled, colored horse, mixed with black, red, and white. Yep. Coming into the battle, gathering his subjects from every nation under heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Did not Daniel interpret the dream and seen that streak of iron running to every kingdom Amen. of Rome? Here they come, gathering. Now, sit still for the close just a minute. And listen close. They're gathering in now to do it. Bringing his subjects from the four corners of the earth, riding a pale, sickly, three-colored mixed horse. Same man. Now, in Revelations 19, not only is he getting ready, but Christ is getting ready to meet him. Amen. The battle's going to be hot and heavy. <laughs> Christ, in Revelation 19, Christ has gathered his, not from the four corners of the earth, because it's going to be a little bit of remnant. What's he doing? He's gathering from the four corners of heaven. Amen. We'll get him soldier on the altar tomorrow night, and you'll see where it's right now. Four corners of heaven on a snow white horse. Hallelujah. He also has a name, not death, but the Word of God. Right. Amen. Amen. Got wrote right on his thigh here. The Word of God. Amen. That's the only life because God is the only source of eternal life there is. Amen. Zoe. Is that right? Amen. And he's got wrote life riding on a white horse. And here's a man with three different powers mixed up called death gathering his earthbound delegates and Christ is gathering his Heaven-born subjects, saints. He's got death wrote on him. Christ got life wrote on him. Those with him are on white horses also. And they are called the uh, chosen before the foundation of the world. <laughs> Amen. 
Amen. And they are faithful to the Word. Amen. I like that one. Paul chosen before the foundation of the world and then faithful to the Word, Mother Chusey. All stimulated with new wine and all. Just God and all right. Coming down to meet him. They know the thunders will issue the thing for us pretty soon. Watch. What? How does he do? So if he is the Word and his name is the Word, then the Word is life. Amen. Amen. The Antichrist, anything anti is against. So anti is against the Christ, the Word. So it's got to be a creed or a denomination which is against the Word. Amen. Well, I don't see how you're going to miss it. <laughs> Do you understand? How could you miss it? <laughs> I don't know how you're going to. That's true. Anti is against, isn't that right? Take away from. That's what he was. He's riding his mixed up horse. We see it right here in the Word of God. We see it right there in the seven church ages. Here he brings right back the seals, open up, showing them things that went on in the church ages. Anti is against the Word. See? Why creeds, why we're so against the creeds and denominations? Because they're against the Word. That's right. See? Here we see life and death come into the final struggle. The white horse of true life, the pale horse of mixed creed. You see the thing coming to the, to the real showdown. I want to say something here. You might not believe this, but I looked it up to be sure. There's only one original color. And that's why. I mean, who's that? There's only one original color. Anything else is mixed. Christ is on a solid, white, unadulterated word from the beginning. Amen. 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 Every color would be white if some chemistry hadn't broke into it. Amen. Amen. Glory. Glory. Every church would be standing on the apostolic doctrine of the word of God and God confirming it if he didn't have creeds and denominations mixed in. Amen. There you are. Oh, Brother Evans, I feel good right now. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Only one original color. That's why. It never, it never mixed with denominations or creeds. No, sir. And remember, his saints are clothed in white robes. Amen. Not mixed with denomination and creeds. Amen. Now, we find out the denomination and creeds, here's where you get your mixed color. But this is the original color he's riding. The original color is on his people. Amen. And they've been dipped in blood. Amen. That cleansed that garment and sent it right back to him. Those that mix turn pale and go to death. It is a perverted, per perversion to mix colors with white. You pervert the original color. Is that right? Yeah. If the original color, only color is white, and you mix something with it, you per pervert its real cause. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. right? And when, if he is the white horse and he is the word, then to mix anything with that, any kind of a creed, add one word to it, take one word away from it, it's to pervert the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. Keep me with the word, Lord. Amen. Amen. Truth and error, <laughs> no matter how good that it, truth and error cannot mix. It cannot mix. It's either the thus saith the Lord or it's wrong. Amen. No matter what Holy Father said it, St. Boniface or, or the Archbishop of Canterbury, I don't know who said it, if it's contrary to the word, it's perversion. Amen. It won't mix. Say, well, this fellow, do, I don't care what he done, how much holy he is or anything like that. This is the only Amen. direct truth that we have. Amen. No church, no creed has no truth if it's outside of this. Amen. And show me one that's got it. Right. Amen. Amen. Just you tell me. I'll turn a page in the Bible and show you something. <laughs> Just call the one. You say Pentecostal. Oh, my. 
<laughs> That's caught that thought from somebody. <laughs> We're leaving alone right now because I've seen that start a sore spot right there. I didn't. It won't have hurt you, but I. I just want you to know I know what you're thinking about. See, those that mix turn the anti to death. They turns the death color when you mix any kind of anything with the original. It is like Christ said about the mustard seed. Yet it's the smallest of all seeds. But it won't mix with nothing. Mustard won't mix. He's genuine mustard. <laughs> So if you just got that much of faith, just hold to it. <laughs> now, life followed rider on white horse, who was the word life, vindicated by his resurrected saints that he had with him. Now, how's the battle going to go? Jesus said, He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He said, uh, if you believe in me, though you're, you were dead, yet shall you live, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Again, he said, He that believes in me, you're giving me eternal life, rise him up in the last days. That's his promised scripture. Amen. Here comes Satan with all four corners of the earth, with his Protestants and with his, uh, his Catholics and all together, marching right up to the battle of Armageddon. All right. And here comes Jesus coming down from heaven with resurrected saints. <laughs> Vindicated word. I said, if God speaks the saints, he, he, he backs up what you say. See? Notice, if you're an ambassador from heaven, the whole heaven's behind you. And heaven is consisted of the word. <laughs> Notice. Now, he's come with resurrected saints vindicating that is word is true. So Satan knows and the bottomless pits is ready for him. See? Oh, my. While death rode the pale horse, mixed creed and denominations and followed him. Oh, my. The eternal separation Amen. from God. That's where he rode him to, the eternal separation. Christ rode his church right into glory in the resurrection. Notice verse 8. Now, just for the last part of verse 8 while we're closing. See? Power was given to them. Who is them? <laughs> See? All right. And a Christ called death. Hell followed. What is four point scheme? Antichrist. White horse. Kills by spirit. Being Antichrist. Spiritual kill. Number two. Red horse. Kills by sword. Political power. When church and state united. Black horse. Souls, when he gave out his doctrine and she did there with her fornications and he weighed out their food by a soul to, uh, their, what they give for food for balancing the pennies and so forth. Fourth, a pale horse, eternal separation from God. Again, four. See? Oh, my. Praise be to God. Now, last, here in closing, to those, have you got... I'm past time, but will you give me about 10 more minutes? Yeah. I got so many calls today about, about me speaking. It's been so much fanaticism start out about Elijah. Yeah, yeah. So that's just, it's, it's hammered to death. Yeah, that's right. And you can, but if, 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 may God help me to help you to see yeah. what I'm looking at, will you? Yeah. It's, it's try to see. Now, here's a closing to those who don't believe that the last messenger to the church age is Elijah the prophet, a man anointed in that land. That's right. Amen. Amen. After death, watch, after death of this last church age, now uh, you notice what happens, see? After death, their dead bodies are destroyed by wild beasts. You know that. Now, that's true. Like theirs had the type of Jezebel. Now I turn to Revelations 2, 18 and 20. I believe we got that just a few minutes ago, didn't we? Yeah, I believe we just got that. I had it go down here for some. Oh, yes, yeah, the time of moral decay. That's what it was. See how, it was how Jezebel had come in. Now, Jezebel is the church's, this modern church, not bride now. Jezebel in the Old Testament is a type of of the church today according to the word of God of Revelation 2, 18, 20. Amen. Thou suffers that woman, Jezebel, who called herself a prophetess. Amen. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. Now, it's typed perfectly to Jezebel. 
Now, the first, we just give you scripture after scripture, see, that the last age is a prophetic message to the church calling them back to the original word. Now, know it. Is that right? Amen. Malachi 4 said so. Amen. And others, Revelations 10, 7, and on down. See, Jesus himself predicted it down, down, down as it was in the days of Lot and so forth like that. And on down. It just keeps coming on down. Jezebel is the type of the modern church today called Catholic and Protestant are joined together now. Like there, there's no getting around. They're both denominations, so it's just it's just mother and sister. That's all. They fuss and argue with one another, but it's the same thing. Both harlots. Now I'm not saying that myself. I'm quoting from "Thus saith the Lord." Amen. All right. Now we notice, killed by command of God was Jezebel. Was killed because God had Jehu to go down there and have her throw it out of the window and kill Jezebel, and the dogs eat her flesh. Is that right? Literal Jezebel. Ahab, her king head, dogs licked his blood as the first Elijah predicted. <laughs> See where we're going, don't you? <laughs> Why? The first Elijah was a rejected man by the churches. And Jezebel and Ahab was the head of them churches. Yeah. Church and states all together. And Elisha revealed Ahab's sins to him and commanded the whole church to turn back to the true word. Yeah. If that ain't exactly what the second Elijah is supposed to do when he comes to this church in this day, yeah. restore back the original faith. Yeah. 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 Well, see how you go to squeeze away from it. Right. Turn back to the true word. That's right. Now, if you want to see their bodies, let's turn over here to Revelation 19 after, after the word slays them. Now, the word's going to kill them. You know that. All right. Now, you just watch and see what happens. When Christ's coming in Revelation 19, beginning with the 17th verse, and I saw an angel standing in the sun. Now, that's right after you look above here. And his breast you is dipped with blood, and he's called King of King and Lord of Lord. And the 13th verse, he's called the Word of God. See? Now, here he is, King of King and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel. Now, watch. He goes forth, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nation out of his mouth, like from God's mouth to Moses' mouth. See? And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and tread the winepress of the fiercest of the wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his vesture a name, uh, on his thigh, a name written, King of King and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel. Now watch. Now he comes forth smiting. Who's he smiting? Jezebel. Enter Ahab, false prophet. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls of the air in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together to the supper of the great God. He feeds them to the beasts and birds. Now watch over here in the other chapter here of the book of Revelation. And, just a minute, kill with the sword and death and beast of the earth. See? The Jezebel church, her actually body is to be eaten by fowls and beasts of the earth. Just exactly like Ahab and Jezebel was in the natural, so are they to be in the spiritual form of church. Amen. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. All right. Elijah's <laughs> Elijah was a prophet in the days of Ahab and Jezebel. Yeah. Natural. And he's promised to do the same thing according to thus saith the Lord in the word to the Jezebel spiritual. Amen. His spirit form of ministry. Watch. Elijah, though in his day properly and profoundly vindicated, could not turn them back to the word. Is that right? Yeah. So Elijah tried with everything. Yeah. He did everything. He, he showed them signs and wonders and they laughed in his face. Amen. Same thing they'll do with the spiritual. Amen. 
He could not turn them back to the Word. Out of the millions, now listen, church, close now. You're still a bit confused on this. Out of the millions in the world in the days of Elijah when Jezebel and Ahab was reigning in, in type of the antitype today, out of the whole world there was only 700 saved of Elijah's preaching. Is that right? right. Exactly. Look, Elijah never knew even one of them was that way. He thought he was the only one saved. Until God opened one of the seals and showed him the mystery in the book that he had 700 that never bowed down to them creeds. <laughs> when God opened his book to Elijah, he said, Now, wait a minute, son. I got 700 stuck around out there. Got their names on the book since the foundation of the world. They're mine. God opened the seals. <laughs> That's the reason I think John was doing a lot of shouting the other night. You must have seen his name on there. Thank God. One day God opened Elijah. He had preached. He had done everything. He had, he had preached his heart out. done everything he could. And still they just hauled him, called him everything and said, You're the cause of all of this. You're spiritless. You're the one who makes all this trouble to come. You're guilty and everything like that. He said everything to him. Jezebel threatened to cut his head off and everything else. That's right. Everybody was against him. And then he said, Lord, after I've done that, all you told me to do, I stayed exactly with your word. When you told me anything, I was fearless. I walked right into the king's face and anything else and told him, Thus saith the Lord. And you haven't told me a thing, and I've not told them one thing but what happened. And now here am I, the only one left out of the whole bunch. I'm the only one left, and they're trying to kill me. God said, I'm going to open up one of the seals and show you something. He said, you know, I got 700 back there <laughs> that ain't never bowed a knee to join any of them creeds yet. <laughs> Denomination. There's 700 of them ready for the rapture. <laughs> oh, oh, he said to his prophet, who he reveals his word to, see, through the scripture, I have 700 prepared names yet out of this generation, 700 of them. They have not bowed their knees to any, if I'd sit in this day, religious organizations and come created up in them. You see what I mean? Yes. Then it simply has to be. Yes. It's just got yes. to be. And it's according to the Word. When the man arrives on the scene, he'll be a prophet just as certain as I'm standing in this pulpit. And he'll stay right with that word. He will not take down for nobody's creed or nothing else. That's right. He'll be a woodsman type of a fellow like Elisha was. He, and like John came, he'll, he'll hate women. Boy, uh, immoral women. Boy, he'll wait on them. Elisha didn't, so did John. See? And... Um, He'll be right straight with that word. He'll be against organizations. Organizations that think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. Amen. For I say, God's able these stones right short of Abraham. Amen. Amen. Sure it is. Now, there you are, friends. Here's the four seat <laughs> open. And the riders of the four horses is revealed to the best of my knowledge. Now, this is all that took place on earth. Next seal we see is in heaven where souls are under the altar. Now just in closing, I want to say these couple, just few words here. I got wrote down. We have skipped about on these four seals, first four seals. Now tomorrow night we, we change the scene from the earthlings going on. He looks up here and sees the souls under the altar. The sacrificed altar. The next night, the judgment strikes. And the fourth night, uh, the last night, Sunday night, I don't know what I don't know what these others mean. I just read them with you, did, but there's silence for a half hour. But there's something took place. I'm expecting him to reveal it. Amen. He'll do it. Amen. I'm satisfied he will. Mm -hmm. We had to go of different places of the Scripture uh, to Revelation 19 to show the coming of Christ will slay the Antichrist. That's the reason I had to leave these. Just take them two verses. I had to go to different parts of the Scriptures to prove these things. So that's the reason I went to Revelation 19 to show the end of Antichrist will be the slaying of Christ. When He comes, He'll slay the Antichrist. To Revelation 10 to show that the seventh angel's message 
will be a person in this last days anointed of God for a ministry just like Elijah the prophet has, as is predicted in Malachi 4, to reveal the true word of the original God in this generation, the original word of God in this generation, like he did to the natural Jezebel, so will this man do it to spiritual Jezebel, the denominational church. Amen. I had to go to the seventh chapter, to the tenth chapter, one to seven verses to prove that it was right, and over to Malachi and Amos and so forth to prove that. Elijah was a prophet that prophesied and condemned Jezebel in that particular generation. And Elijah never died. He certainly did. He appeared again some 800 years later by the side of Jesus Christ on Mount Transfiguration. He isn't dead. Now, we find out that His Spirit is to anoint a man according to the promise of God in the last days. Promise to do the same in spirit, Jezebel, as it did in natural, Jezebel, in the last age. That's why I, I went to so much of the Bible to prove it. So it won't be left a question in your mind. If there is, you let me know. But write me a letter or a little note. And it so perfectly blends even to the beast destroying their natural bodies in the last day, consuming them as he did then. Yeah. To the best of my revelation that was given to me by God and foretold that it would be done, this is the truth of the four horse riders to the Amen. best of my Amen. What do you think about Jesus? Yeah. I love him. I love him. He me. with no bad feelings towards any people in any organization because God's got children in the Catholic system. He's got children in the Methodist system. He's got children in the Baptist system. How many of those all them different systems is represented here tonight that come out of it when you see light? Let's see your hand. Amen. Now remember, there's people out there just like you. Amen. But it's a system that kills. Amen. See? It's the Antichrist spirit that finally gets them to a place so they won't hear no truth. And remember the other night when we went through the ceiling? If a man heard the Jubilee call and he refused to go free, he was taken to the post and an orb marked his ear. Ear is where you hear, and faith cometh by hearing. Then if he hears it and refuses to accept his freedom, then he's asked to serve his denominational master the rest of his life. Amen. 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 Oh, my, isn't he wonderful? Amen. Ah. Worship him now as a homage.
how thankful we are. I'm so glad, Lord, so happy for you and your people. Oh, Lord, you purchased our salvation on Calvary. We gladly accept it, Lord. Now try us, Lord, by your Spirit. And if there be any evil among us, Lord, any unbelief of the Word, any person, share, Father, that would not punctuate every promise of God with an amen, may the Holy Spirit come down now, the white horse rider, while his Spirit, Spirit of Christ, in the face of Antichrist, and call his own. Call them out, Lord. May now they repent, come quickly to you, and be filled with the oil and the wine, and be changed from that denominational robe of peace, death, unto a snow-white robe of eternal life given out by the bridegroom. And then they'll go to the wedding supper someday in the vindicated word of the resurrection. Grant it, Lord. Search the hearts while the people wait on you. Through Jesus' name. I just search your heart, my brother, my sister, my friend. I've been with you a long time. This is about 33 years. Have I ever told you anything in the name of the Lord but what comes to pass? Search Christ now while you have a chance to. It may come pretty soon where you can't do it. See? He may leave the seat any time of His intercession. Then you could cry with all your heart. You could stomp. You could speak in tongues, you could run up and down the floor, you could do anything you wanted to enjoy in every church in the world, there's nothing, no more bleach for your blood, your sin. And what do you, where are you then? Well, I believe with all my heart, the seat's still open. I believe he's still on the throne of God. But soon he's going to rise now and come forth to claim what he has redeemed. He's doing the work of kinsman redeemer while Ruth is waiting. But soon, you know, after Boaz done the kinsman work, then he come and claimed his possession. And that's exactly what the Bible said he done. He come forth and took the book. Then intercession is over. He's off the throne. There's no more blood on the mercy seat. And then what is it? Judgment seat. Don't let it be said some of these days, I thought the rapture was supposed to come and hear the voice say back, it's in the past. God help you. <coughs> now let's bow our heads. Brother Neville, come for dismissing whatever you have to do. God bless you until tomorrow. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we are truly thankful tonight that again our ears have been permitted by thy help to hear this message. We pray that it'll go even deeper and sink into our hearts. Mold us and make us after thy fashioning way according to thy will. We pray tonight that there may be no evil thoughts or anything that would permeate or any hindrance of any kind that would mar this kind of fellowship. May every one of the beloved in here tonight, dear God, May there come the feeling and the sense and the knowledge of the combined feeling of fellowship that's upon the people of God today. We pray that thou bless those who feel, as it were, their sense of need at this time. May you truly bring them in, Lord. Go with us now as you dismiss us, our Lord. Keep us under the unction and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let dreams, revelations, and visions cross us and, and help us, Lord, that we might be able to encourage one another and to be a cooperative one together with the message of thy servant and prophet. Bless all who are here confined within the four walls tonight. Take us to our places where you would have us to go, and we shall praise thee 
for all of this, for we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen and amen. God bless you. And dismissed from the auditorium as soon as possible.